I'm a landscape architect, <laughs> fundamentally. Uh, I lucked out uh, in going to landscape architecture school. I went to Harvard and went to work in a laboratory for computer map making or spatial analytics and spatial analytics. And there I was introduced to quantitative methods and systems analysis. This was in the 60s, a long time ago before many of you were born. I wasn't pointing at you, really. <laughs> and I got just thrilled and excited what computation could do for environmental planning, my interest, and landscape planning. That was my background. Uh, and I saw that computational tools could help us sort of not only make interesting maps, but do the analysis of, of geography. And that got me just excited, actually. Um, and I sort of went towards applications of these tools in the land use planning and environmental planning world. And in the 60s, the, the, um, the big environmental movement began with Silent Spring, Rachel Carson, a kind of environmental movement, the hippie movement was emerging. And as students, we were sort of, what does this all mean? But at the same time, I was taking really foundational courses in uh, modeling, in analytics, and environmental science, and geography, uh, which became the passion for my life. Uh, I left the academy, and I'm not totally sure why. I could have been an academic, uh, but somehow I went back to the, the West Coast and started I, I hunted for a job, but there were no jobs that were interesting or would e even understand what I was trying to do with computing. Uh, so I started this company. Uh, and I started it with the idea that I would apply computational geography to problem solving. So you asked me yesterday, are you just doing green washing? Yes, I thought that you are. Yeah. So. I love what I do. So in starting my company, it was actually to practice what I really wanted to do. And that was 50 years ago, and today is today. Uh, that company has been prosperous. It continues growing. We grew another 100 million last year. So there's a business dimension to what I do, which is indicative to me of the success of my fundamental work. Uh, it's not what I'm chasing. I'm really changing, ch trying to chase the idea of integrating environmental thinking or geographic thinking into, into the way things get done, uh, like fund fund creating geographic knowledge, integrating geographic knowledge into fundamental government activities so that government behaves better, uh, or into business, empowering business so that they could be geographically enlightened or empowered. So it's, it's not sort of um, a mantle on the top, it's trying to integrate sustainable thinking into the business practices of organizations. And, and so that, does that answer your question? Jack, tell me, uh, how did you sustain five decades? Those who don't, who don't know that ESRI is completed 50 years, by the way. Let's give a good applause for that. <laughs> So how did you sustain five decades of, uh, of being social entrepreneur and like, you know, the, I'm sure there have, must have been a lot of challenges. So how did you continue your purpose as well as made it profitable and sustainable? Uh, that's a tough question. How many of you are in business and leaders? So his question is kind of uh, We all get challenged, awkward. you know, yeah. and every moment. Every moment, uh, you, you have to survive. Um, and I chose to go into private practice because I could see how using private market mechanisms could actually, and competitive mechanisms, could actually make me go faster or further. Uh, it was kind of like co-evolving with my colleagues, competitors, or market needs. And in that co-evolution with uh, other competitors and partners, what happens is you need to stay ahead. Uh, so in my case, I was lucky because I didn't borrow any money. Uh, I didn't take venture capital. I could do it the way I wanted to do it. And that's a real privilege. I don't suggest it for everybody. 
but it meant that I could serve, serve what I wanted to do. And in that, I chose to serve my users. My customers defined the sense of purpose that I had. Mm -hmm. And in that game, it meant that my customers would pay me money, and I spent all my money on driving technical innovation. So today I still have like 1,500 engineers that do nothing but drive the technology, and this involves about a third of my revenue. I keep pouring it back into R&D and advancing the method. Uh, so those of you who are entrepreneurial uh, or entrepreneurs or lead a company, uh, I have two things to say. First, uh, let your customers define your sense of purpose because by solving their problems and defining your organization as an organization that solves your customers' problems, then you, then you are responsive to the market. The second one is invest as absolutely much as you possibly can in R&D and advancing the method. Don't be at the effect of, don't be at the effect of technology change, be the cause. And these two principles have, have really dri driven me uh, uh, through the years. And yes, we all go through rough times, economic times or competitive times, but the principles of staying focused on purpose to serve your customers and also uh, operating as a nonprofit, in my case, uh, I could spend all of what uh, I got in the way of revenue back into R&D. And this, this is, uh, I, th I think this is actually true, not just in business, it's true in, if I had stayed at Harvard in the research lab, I would have done the same thing. You know, try to innovate uh, and, and push. If I was in government, I would try to continue innovation. It's like, innovation is in my soul. That's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's it. And keep chasing it and pushing it and going for it. That, that to me, gets me excited. You know, today we meet a lot of uh, uh, leaders who want to make business like this and then sell it in two years or three years. That's the goal they have. And what I saw the trend in the survey is that organic growth or partnership models are the most preferred business models at the moment. Mm -hmm. So do you see uh, some kind of, you know, uh, like going back to the basic in terms of the business philosophy where uh, it's getting more established that, you know, the business is a long-term game rather than just short-term game? Well, for me it was. I'm not saying it's good for everybody, and certainly there's lots of VC-based companies that are focused on get-rich-quick kind of thing. For me, I like to grow my business like a tree. Take a look at lunch at the trees around here. They kind of slowly grow organically. And they need nurturement and they keep changing and evolving. Grow your business like a tree. And I'm not into acquisitions and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, acquisitions. Uh, companies seem to survive very well that way. But for me, my philosophy has always been growing organically. And then also you hit on another point, which is partnerships. Uh, so I have 2,500 partners, and they're a vibrant ecosystem. So my company is about a billion and a half dollars revenue, um, but I drive about 22 billion of partner revenue. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's like a little trim tab, the little thing on the back of a rudder on a boat. You sort of move the trim tab, moves the rudder, moves the big super tanker. So I can, I am totally leveraged by my my business partners. And I don't know if that's right, it's certainly not right for everybody, but for me, that has given me stability, it's given me a sense of purpose, and I could, I could, uh, so I like the idea that I'm in partnership with thousands of, of partners, and I think of my, my, my users as my partners, they drive me as well, uh, but also I think of formal business partners building an ecosystem in the geospatial business. And some people are in the measurement business. Some people are in the, the data management business. Some people are in the, in the visualization business. Some people are in the application business. Some people are in the decision support business. Some people are in the workflow app application business. These are, these are all interesting. And the, the normal appetite in a company is to try to get as much as you can, expand, you know, horizontally. 
my philosophy has been, and again, like I say, I don't advise it for everybody, but to focus on a core basic technology of GIS and location services as a, as a be the best in the world at that, and then partner with everybody else. Um, sometimes I'm perceived as competition by some of you. I hope that you wouldn't feel that way. I want you to feel like I'm open for business or open for partnering, because I, my real experience is partnerships can, can one plus one is equal to ten. There's, it, it, just, just, it just works that way. So that means being more humble, being more modest, and working on interpersonal relationships of trust. So what's the, what's the philosophy? We have known uh, that you know, in Palm Springs, almost 7,000, 10,000 people come as your partners, but then off late we have seen that you are partnering very strategically with companies like Autodesk, Salesforce. What's the story around that? Well, um, Autodesk is, has been really successful for us. It's opened up a whole new market by connecting our technology with their technologies to support broader workflows. That's been good. Uh, some of you might have noticed we recently announced a new partnership with Salesforce. They have, you know, 10 million customers. I only have 350,000 customers, organizations. And that we will be using our location services platform to spatially enable all of their business workflows. And similarly with Adobe, we're using our geospatial context data and our customers are uh, So basically Adobe you're looking users. at the scalability of applicability. Yeah, well it's plugging in and spatially enabling, you know, in, in my broadest vision, it would be bringing geography and geographic thinking or environmental thinking into other businesses. And I can get there faster than trying to do it all myself by simply being a component. Um, you know, I'd rather be a node in the network than the hub of the wheel. Thank you very much, Jack. It's been great talking to you on this.